so we have this okay so i will i'll just go through the the syllabus that was proposed in the beginning and we have covered a lot of material in this course uh, and today we will cover this part which is causality and deep learning so i'll talk about causality and uh, the these days a lot of work is happening at the at the intersection of uh, of causality and and deep learning so how many of you have heard of uh, causality before sir uh... yeah hello yeah sandeep please go ahead uh, yes sir uh, actually we learn um, this uh, concept in signal processing uh okay causal and non causal signals like so what do you understand by like causal and non causal signals uh causal signals are those signals uh, actually which are uh, present at a given time or those were present uh, some time before that means those signals which can be recorded or uh, that can be stored okay <clears throat> so in our system sciences uh, causality basically when 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 somebody is talking about causality it is uh, for example you must have heard of this uh, famous enso monsoon relationship so enso is causing monsoon right it is forcing monsoon or it, it is a parent and monsoon is a causal child so there are these models there these <clears throat> big models uh basically deep learning or uh, machine learning different types of statistical or dynamical models things become quite complex right but to understand in a very simplistic manner uh if you want to tell to a layman what is exactly happening in the in the system so for example in this case if you like you would want to create such kind of simplistic graphs okay so and and attribute the the uh the changes in a system to a particular cause so that is basically causality now people uh, have confused like people confused co confuse causality with uh, correlation a lot of time so for that you should see this this website it's titled spurious correlations and you can see that the correlation of us pending in science on science space and technology uh, and suicides by hanging strangulation and suffocation the correlation coefficient is 0.99 now you can see that these uh, two time series or these two systems are going quite hand in hand with each other but the thing is that they might not be associated with each other like us pending on so uh, seeing this graph uh, if somebody makes a conclusion that suicides are happening because we are increasing our spending in science that's a wrong uh, conclusion right so that kind of causal like, like causal uh, interpretation is wrong so what might be happening is that the base economy itself is increasing or the number of people are increasing the population is increasing which is leading to an increase in the economy and it's leading to an increase in the us spending on science technology space and since the base number is increasing so the total number of suicides are also increasing so these uh, these are like two different uh, so the population is increasing is is a cause of let's say the spending on science is increasing that's one particular cause and effect uh, mechanism population is increasing suicides are increasing that's another uh, cause and effect relationship but spending on science and suicides they can't they can't be associated with each other right just 
give me a moment. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so we were here, and this is uh, this is followed in a like you can basically take up any two time series or any two variables. So number of people who drowned by falling into a pool correlates with films Nicolas Cage appeared in. Per capita cheese consumption. Uh, correlates with number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. So there was, I, I think I read this, there was even a paper on this, a publication on this, where somebody was trying to argue that if you increase the cheese consumption, um, you will die in your, in your bed sheet. And they were using this, this data. And so these are all uh, <clears throat> these are all uh, spurious correlations uh, so there is a very famous quote correlation is not causation okay so if you just type on google correlation is not causation so means that just because two things correlate does not necessarily mean that one causes uh, the other and this is also a, a case in our field right people will gather some data and you just compute the correlation and uh, some kind of physical mechanism is is then uh, attributed to that uh, correlation but it might not mean that that physical relationship exists so for example you have a dry hot and sunny summer weather it leads to sunburn and it leads to like so ice cream ice cream sales increase but can ice cream cause sunburn no but if you see the 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 data that will give you a very high correlation right so that then brings us like this is the foundational like you should know why causation uh, causality is important and why you should establish causality and uh, move beyond correlation so we will we will go through this this book causal inference for the brave and the true okay so let me go to this first chapter so which is introduction to causality and uh, okay so data science is not what it used to be or finally is yeah let's just skip this this introduction okay when association is causation so intuitively we kind of know why the association is not causation so we have seen right ice creams increase in ice cream sales and increase in the number of sunburns that's an association but that might not mean that there is an associate uh, causation uh, that is associate like that might not mean a causation. So if someone tells you that schools uh, that give tablets to their students perform better than those uh, that don't, you can quickly point out that it, it is probably the case that those schools with tablets are wealthier. As such, uh, they would do better than average even without the tablets. Uh, because of this, we can't conclude that giving tablets to kids during classes will cause an increase in their academic performance. We can only say that the tablets in schools are associated with high academic performance. So you can see that uh, the tablets, uh, this is false. So this is a distribution of the schools that do not give tablets to their students. This is a distribution box plot of the schools which give tablets to the students. Like the, what is plotted is the their scores. And to get beyond a simple intuition, let's first establish some notation. This will be our everyday language to speak about causality. Think of it as the common tongue we will use to identify other brave and true causal warriors. 
and that will compose our cry in in the many battles to come so let's call ti the treatment intake for unit i so uh, this is heavily used in the medical science community medical science so if you are trying to if you are trying to develop a drug for example for covid 19 and uh, so you need to show causation uh, or you need to show causality for that drug so that is uh, you can think of it as some kind of treatment so ti is equal to 1 if unit i is received uh, and zero otherwise so what they would do typically is that select a sample from the population let's say 100 people uh, let's say we have 200 people who are who are uh, having a disease select uh, out of those 200 select 100 give them a particular treatment don't give the treatment to the remaining 100 and then see whether uh, the 100 that you gave the treatment whether what is the uh, parameter so uh, this they will basically measure some kind of parameter uh, for example you can measure blood pressure or you can you can measure any any metric and take the average of the treated sample uh, and subtract it from the average of the sample which was not given the treatment so that is how typically uh, the causality will be estimated and the treatment here doesn't need to be a medicine or anything from the medical field instead it's just a term we will use to denote some intervention which we uh, want to know the effect So in our case, the treatment is giving tablets to the students. As a side note, you might sometimes uh, see D instead of T to denote the treatment. Now let's call Y I the observed outcome variable for unit I. The outcome is our variable of interest. We want to know uh, if the treatment has any influence in it. In our tablet example, it would be the academic performance. So you take the average of these uh, students, for example, and the average of these students, and uh, compare uh, these two averages or compare medians. That will basically give you the uh, give you the effect of the treatment. Here, the treatment is whether you are giving a tablet or not. here is uh, where things get interesting the fu fundamental problem of uh, causal inference so here now uh, we have seen this term for the first time causal inference so there are two or three important terminologies one is causal discovery so causal discovery is if you are trying to find out the causal graph okay so let us see this paper for example uh, or let us see causal discovery okay so causal discovery is uh, is basically it aims to infer the causal structure uh, from the data so given some data you have different variables we want to interpret the causal graph from the uh, from the data set so that is called causal discovery now there are different methods to perform causal discovery so you can it's a it's a whole big field so you can go through these these methods then there is something known as causal inference okay so causal inference is uh, now assume that you are given a causal graph or you have estimated a causal discovery graph from the data causal inference it refers to an intellectual discipline that considers the assumptions study designs and estimation strategies that allow researchers to draw causal conclusions based on data now for example in uh, in our field if you have to drive drive uh, or derive a conclusion that enso el nino leads to monsoon droughts okay so what is what is that so you you will basically first of all take different uh, fields right data from different fields based on the domain knowledge or based on uh, based on some kind of causal discovery algorithm you will develop a causal discovery graph 
right now we have the graph from that graph we want to estimate the probability of a drought such that an el nino is given now you cannot just like that uh, from the graph you cannot just look at it and tell so causal inference helps us to do that you you have so for example if if this is your graph you have for example enso you have monsoon you have iod you have pdo you have you have different different uh, systems at play right and you have the causal discovery graph now you want to find out that probability of for example this is monsoon probability of monsoon equal to drought let's say monsoon equal to minus 10% or minus 15% or less than 10% such that conditional to let's say this is enso enso is equal to el nino which is basically sst's are uh, you will say maybe greater than 0.5 standard deviation so that is uh, if you are trying to make that kind of an in inference that is uh, or or a conclusion that is causal inference so <clears throat> very simply you can you can think of it as a particular system this causes that so and and so el nino causes drought or la nina causes uh, wet monsoons so that is uh, yeah so that is about causal inference and the uh, the inherently that is what you are trying to do in in science right you are trying to develop stories you are trying to derive conclusions from the data and what you are doing is uh, basically causal inference like even if even if people are using models even if some of you who would be using different models wrf or uh, Uh, CFS or IIT MESM, any model if you are using, and you are doing a sensitivity experiment, you are forcing a model with some forcing. The other model is a uh, you are not forcing; it's a control simulation, and then you are taking a difference of them and saying that with this forcing, let's say with uh, by by forcing with the uh, with with solar radiation, something is changing. That is also causal inference. So inherently. <clears throat> causal inference need not be only statistical causal inference can be anything where you are uh, where you are trying to separate the causes and effects okay and uh, develop some kind of arguments or conclusions from the uh, from the graph or from the from the system that you have so it's as if we have two diverging roads and we can only know what lies ahead uh of the one we take so okay the the challenging part in in statistic statistical causal inference or uh, statistical causality is that you can for example you can give the treatment to 100 people now selecting that 100 people might be biased you don't know that what might have happened if you wouldn't have given the treatment to this 100 uh, you wouldn't have given the treatment to this 100 people so it's 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 challenging problem to basically attribute a cause and effect type of relationship uh, for for two systems so we then we should also understand this term which is known as potential outcomes so uh, potential outcomes are potential because they they didn't actually happen so for example you gave treatment to a person and now you are trying to estimate like you are trying to find out the effect of treatment on that person but you don't know what would have happened if you wouldn't have given the treatment right and uh, so we we call this as the potential outcome that happened uh factual and uh, the one that didn't happen as counterfactual so the the one that did not happen is called the counterfactual and the one that happened is called the factual so counterfactual you if you if you go to this field of causality you will hear this word counterfactual a lot and as for the notation we use an additional subscript 
y zero i is the potential outcome for unit i without the treatment y i one is the potential outcome for the same unit i with the treatment now sometimes you might see potential outcomes represented as functions y i t so okay anyway these are the different notations so back to our example y1 i is the academic performance of the student i if he or she is in a classroom with tablets whether uh, this is or not the case it doesn't matter for y1 i it is the same regardless if a student i gets a tablet we can observe y i y1 i if we can, if not we can observe y0 i so notice how in the last case y one i is still defined we just can't see it and in this case it is a counterfactual potential outcome with the potential outcomes we we can define the individual treatment effect so y one i is uh, with so when you have hypothetically let's say we define the counterfactual so we, now let's say we can we can measure both the effects so you give medicine to a person and you don't give medicine to that person at the same time what might happen so you just take a difference of the two potential outcomes and that is the individual treatment effect now of course due to the fundamental problem of causal inference we can never know the individual treatment effect because we only observe one of the potential outcomes so for the time being let's focus on something easier than estimating the individual treatment effect instead let's focus on average treatment effect so which is defined as the mean of y1 minus y0 where e is the expected value another easier quantity to estimate is the average treatment effect on the treated so you would typically want to measure the average treatment effect only on the people who are treated right it it should not be on the people who are not treated so that would bias your your outcomes now i know that uh, we can't see both potential outcomes but just for the sake of argument let's suppose we could pretend that the causal inference deity is pleased with many statistical battles we fought and has rewarded us with godlike powers to see the potential alternate outcomes with that power say we collect data on four schools okay so these are the four schools we know uh, if they gave tablets to the students and their score on some annual academic tests so these are their their scores on their uh, on different academic tests here tablets are the treatment so t is the treatment you see here uh, wherever it is zero it you are not giving a tablet wherever it is one you are giving a tablet uh, so t is equal to 1 if the school provides tablet to the kids y will be the test score so why is this uh, why is the test score and uh, t is whether the tablet is given or not the ate here would be the mean of the last column that is of the treatment effect so this is the this is the this is the treatment effect uh, here so you are we are having y0 so that is so is saying that hypothetically assume that that uh, that we we are able to measure both y0 and y1 so <clears throat> y1 is the treated y0 is is uh, uh, not treated so 450 minus 500 it gives you minus 50 so here 600 minus 600 0 so 600 minus 800 minus 200 750 minus 700 750 so the average treatment effect here would be the mean of the last column that is the uh, that is of the treatment effect so this would mean that the tablets reduce the academic performance of the students on average by 50 points the att here uh, average treatment effect on uh, so of the treated so only we are uh, we are measuring the average treatment effect on the on the schools which gave the tablet so here uh, would be the mean of the last column when t equal to 1 so this is uh, this this will be minus 200 plus 50 uh, by 2 so this will give you minus 75 so this is saying that for the schools that were treated the tablets reduce the academic performance of the students on average by 75 points of course we can never know this in reality 
the table would look like something like this so if you are not giving the treatment you would not know y1 right and if you are giving the treatment you will not know y0 so this is surely not ideal you might say but can't i still take the mean of the treated and compare it to the mean of the untreated so in other words can't i just do the average treatment effect as uh, so 600 plus 750 uh, so this is yeah so the treated 600 plus 750 by 2 minus 500 plus 600 by 2 which is 125 well no notice how different the results are you have just committed the gravest sin of mistaking association for causation and to understand why uh, let's let's look into the main enemy of causal inference so the main enemy of causal inference is bias so bias is what makes association different from causation and fortunately it can be easily understood with our intuition so let's recap our tablets in the classroom example when con confronted with the claim that schools that give tablets to their kids achieve higher test scores we can refute it by saying that schools will probably achieve higher test scores anyway even without the tablets this is because they probably have more money than other schools hence they can pay better teachers afford better classrooms etc in other words it is the case that treated schools with uh, that treated schools that is the schools with tablets are not comparable with untreated schools so it is not that it might not be that it is because of the tablets it might be because of other reasons that the students performance is good uh so we cannot we cannot actually attribute it to the to the tablets and using potential outcome notation is to say that y0 of the treated is different from y0 of the untreated so you remember that y0 of the treated is uh is, is counterfactual so y of 0 basically means that uh, so 0 here represents that the treatment is not given and 1 represents that the treatment is given so y0 of the treated basically you cannot measure so it is the counterfactual we can't observe it but we can reason about it so in this particular case we can even leverage our understanding of how the world works to go even further we can say that probably y0 of the treated is bigger than y0 of the untreated schools that is because schools that can afford to give tablets to their kids can also afford other factors that contribute to better test scores let this sink in uh, for a moment it takes some time to get used to talking about potential outcomes uh, okay so with this in mind we can show with elementary math why it is the case that association is not causation so association is measured by the mean of uh, y uh, of treated minus the mean of y of untreated so in our example this is that this is the average test score for the schools with tablets minus the average test scores for the schools without them on the other hand causation is measured by the mean of y1 minus y0 so that is the for the same person uh, you give the treatment and for the same person you uh, don't give a treatment and then you measure a difference of them and take a mean mean of those numbers those differences now let's take uh, the association measurement and replace the observed outcomes with the potential outcomes to see how they relate so for the treated the observed outcome is y1 for the untreated the observed outcome is y0 so here uh, the expected value of uh, y such that treated minus expected value of y such that not treated is same as the expected value of y1 so y1 is representing the uh, that the treatment is given minus expected value of y0 such that treatment is not given now let's add and subtract the expected value of uh, y0 such that treatment is given so this is the counterfactual argument outcome uh, why this is counterfactual is because you cannot measure this right you cannot you cannot give a treatment and then say that i want to measure the uh, response uh, of untreated right and it it tells what would have been the outcome of the treated had they not received the treatment so you just uh, subtract this and uh, take take a sum of this 
and uh, so it, it basically becomes e of y1 such that treated minus e of y0 such that not treated so and so you and similarly you we have this e of y0 uh, so you you take this you add this y0 such that t equal to 1 and you uh, also subtract this so if we reorder these terms and uh, merge some expectations so you reorder these terms basically and uh, so you can get this y expected value of y1 minus y0 such that treated and expected value of y0 such that treated minus expected value of y0 such that not treated so this is this term is known as known as the bias and this is the average treatment effect of the treated so this this simple piece of math encompasses all the problems we will encounter in causal questions i cannot stress how important it is that you understand every aspect of it if you are ever forced to uh, tattoo something on your arm this equation should be a good candidate of it it's something to hold on to dearly and understand what is telling what what is telling us like some sacred text that can be interpreted 100 different ways so in fact uh, let's take a deeper look let's break it down into some of its implications first this equation tells us why the association is not causation as we can see the association is equal to the treatment effect on the treated plus a bias term so this is treatment effect on the treated plus uh, this is the this is the bias term that we have the bias is given by how the treated and control group differ before the treatment uh, in case uh, so here you can see uh, how before the treatment the uh, that is you have not given the treatment but you are estimating uh, the the mean of treated minus like conditioning or it on t equal to 1 and con uh, take, uh, subtracting it with conditioning on t equal to 0 okay so the bias is given by how the treated and control group differ before the treatment in case neither of them has received the treatment we can now say precisely why we have, we are suspicious when someone tells us that tablets in the classroom boost ac academic performance we think that in this example uh, this term expected value of y0 such that t equal to 0 is less than expected value of y0 such that t equal to 1 that is schools that can afford to give tablets to the kids are better than those that can't regardless of the tablets treatment so why why this happens is so we will talk uh, more about that once we enter confounding so that is that is another important terminology here which is uh, confounding so you have counterfactuals you have causal inference causal discovery and now we have this term confounding so very uh, in a very simplistic sense you can understand confounding as uh, make so for example you are having tablets and you are associating academic performance to tablets so you are saying tablets causes academic performance good academic performance that might not be the cause so that is so tablets is a confounder in this case so you are basically this is this is what is known as confounding okay <clears throat> so yeah we will yeah so we'll we'll just see this uh, the summary of this or the conclusion so far we have seen that association is not causation and more importantly we have seen precisely why it isn't and how we can make association to be causation we also introduced the potential outcome notation as a way to wrap our heads around causal reasoning with it we saw statistics as two possible realities one in which the treatment is given and another in which it is not but unfortunately we can only measure one of them where the fundamental problem of causal inference lies we will see some basic techniques to estimate causal effects starting with a golden standard of a randomized trial and also review some statistical concepts as we go ahead okay so next we uh, we will come to randomized trials so 
we have seen this equation okay and uh, so we saw also saw what is required to make association to be uh, be causation and uh, i think it's uh, we did an okay job okay now let's let's uh, look at this terminology which is known as randomized trials or randomized experiments so randomized experiments consist of randomly assigning individuals in a population to a treatment or a control group so you are having uh, like we were discussing you are having 200 people you are randomly assigning treatment to people and you are randomly saying okay so the uh, alternate person will not get the treatment the proportion that receives the treatment doesn't have to be 50% you could have an experiment where only 10% of your samples get the treatment randomized uh, randomization annihilates bias by making the potential outcomes independent of the treatment so you are randomly selecting the the samples so it basically annihilates uh, the the bias and the potential outcome so it, the outcome doesn't depend on the treatment so it, it is not like you uh, give the treatment uh, to a particular person or you give to the other and it would give you different results on an average so the outcome is is basically independent of the of the treatment now this can be confusing at first but uh, don't worry yeah so uh, but but notice i'm not talking about the outcomes rather we are talking about potential outcomes the potential outcomes is how the outcome would have been under the treatment y1 or under the control y0 so in randomized trials we don't want the outcome to be independent of the treatment since we think the treatment causes the outcome but we want potential outcomes to be independent from the treatment okay okay so then uh, yeah so you must have seen this uh, this this photo right this is a uh, very famous uh, picture where uh, so, so that was all about randomized randomized experiments and this is a statistics overview so i'm not going to this you know what is uh, what is standard error sigma divided by root n what is sigma square okay mm, then what are the confidence intervals hypothesis testing okay then we'll come to uh, graphical causal models so thinking about causality so have you ever noticed how those cooks in youtube videos are excellent at describing food reduce the sauce until it reaches a velvety consistency if you are just starting to learn how to cook you have no idea what this even means just give me the time i should leave uh, this thing on the stove with causality it's the same thing if you walk into a bar and hear folks discussing causality you will hear them say how the confounding of income made it challenging to identify the immigration effect on that neighborhood so they had to use an instrumental variable and by now you might not understand what they are talking about but i'll fix at least some of this problem right now so graphical models are the language of causality i think this is the second or the third time we are we are coming to graphs and graphical models and uh, so we saw graphs in graph neural networks in complex networks okay this is the third time we are talking about graphs so they are not not only what you used to talk with other brave and true causality efficiano those but also something you you used to make your own thoughts clearer as a starting point let's take conditional independence of the potential outcomes for example this is one of the main assumptions that that we require to be true so y0 and y1 are uh, should be independent of the treatment 
that is the, the basically the potential outcome should be independent of the treatment that like something you should just remember by heart now conditional independence makes it possible for us to measure an effect on the outcome that is solely due to due to the treatment and not any other variable lurking around the classic example of this is in fact of uh, is, is the effect of a medicine on an ill patient if only severely ill patients get the drug it might even look like the drug decreases the patient's health that is because the effect of sever severity is getting mixed up with the effect of the drug if however we break down the patients by severe and not not severe uh, cases and analyze the drug impact in each subgroup we will get a more clear picture of what the true effect is this breaking down the population by its features is what we call controlling or for or confounding on x so by conditioning on the severe cases the treatment mechanism becomes as good as random and patients within the severe group may or may not receive drug only due to chance not due to a high severity anymore since all patients are the sa are same on the on this dimension and if treatment is as if randomly assigned within groups the treatment becomes conditionally independent of the potential outcomes so if you randomly assign the treatments within the groups it becomes conditionally independent of the potential outcomes now independence and conditional independence are central to causal inference yet it can be quite challenging to wrap our head around them but this can change if we use the right language to describe this problem so here is where causal graphical models come in causal graphical model is a way to represent how causality works in terms of what causes what so graphical model might look something like this okay so this is the network x code used to generate these these two graphs so for example severeness uh, how how severe is the pain or the problem it leads to whether the medicine is given and whether the person survived or not and uh, without the medicine so this is the without the treatment so each node is a random variable we use arrows or edges to show if the variable causes another in the first graphical model above we are saying that z causes x and that u causes x and y to give a more concrete example we can translate our thoughts about the impact of the medicine on patient survival as the second graph above severeness causes both medicine and survival and medicine also causes survival as we will see this causal graphical models language will help us make our thinking about causality more clear clearer as it makes explicit our beliefs about how uh, the world works so there are whole semesters on on uh, graphical models you can go to this specialization uh, probabilistic graphical models specialization it's a three course uh, specialization i think it's also offered at stanford uh, it's a really nice nice course uh, if you want to make yourself strong in in graphical models but for our purpose it is just very important that we understand what kind of independence and conditional independence assumption a graphical model entails as we shall see independence flows through a graphical model like water flows through a stream we can stop this flow or we can enable it depending on how we treat the variables in it so to understand this let's examine some common graphical structures and their examples this will be quite simple but there are uh, but they are the sufficient building blocks to understand everything about independence and conditional independence on graphical models so first look at this simple graph a causes b b causes c or x causes y and uh, x causes y which causes z so it can it can be uh, x can be causal knowledge so causal knowledge basically leads to solving of problems solving of problems uh, leads to job promotion so in the first graph dependence flows in the direction of the arrows so here you can see a to b and b to c to give a more concrete example let's say that knowing about causal inference is the only way to solve business problems 
and solving those problems is the only way to get a promotion so causal knowledge causes problem solving which causes job promotion we can say here that job promotion is dependent on causal knowledge so causal knowledge is a uh, causal parent of job promotion the greater the causal knowledge the greater your chances of getting a promotion notice that dependence is symmetric so although it is it is a little less intuitive so the greater your chances of promotion the greater chances uh, chance you have causal knowledge otherwise it will be difficult to get promotion now let's say i condition on the intermediate intermediary variable so which is the intermediary variable solve problems in this case the dependence is blocked so x and z are independent given y so if you are given y if you know that you can solve problems then causal knowledge and job promotion are independent to each other then there is no causal relationship between them because you already can solve the problem right so you do not like it doesn't matter whether you have causal knowledge or not so uh, x and z are independent given y in the graph above red indicates that y is a conditioned variable by the same token in our example if we know that you are good at solving problems knowing that you know causal inference doesn't give any further information about your chances of getting a promotion so you can solve a problem and uh, for example your organization doesn't care about how you are solving that problem is just that you are just solving the problem and you are getting a promotion so in mathematical terms the expected value of uh, so expect uh, or the probability of or uh, the expectation of promotion given that you can solve problems uh, and causal knowledge is equal to the expected value of promotion given that you can solve problems so you can understand this from 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 our perspective so the expected value of a route given that you have an ldno and a positive iod so if 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 you establish that an ldno causes a uh, causes a particular flavor of iod and that flavor of iod is then leading to the monsoon drought then you don't need that that uh, causal parent as the ldno so the inverse is also true once i know how good you are at solving problems knowing about your job promotion status gives me uh no further information about how likely uh, you are to know the causal inference and as a general rule the dependence flow in the uh, direct path from a to c is blocked when we condition on an intermediary variable b or a is uh, a and c are uh, are uh, so not depend so this is this is the dependence uh in a and c are independent given b and a, are, a and c are not independent uh, otherwise so now let's consider a fork structure so in this case the same variable causes two other variables uh, down the graph in this case the dependence flows backward through the arrows and we have what is called as the backdoor path so we can close the backdoor path and shut down dependence by conditioning on the common cause so here you can see that c causes a and c also causes b so this is the graph structure that you have <coughs> now uh, <coughs> similar to that you have x causing y and z now x can be statistics y is let's say causal inference and z is machine learning so as an example let's say your knowledge of statistics causes you to know more of causal inference and machine learning if i don't know your level of statistical knowledge then knowing that you are good at causal inference makes it more likely that you are good at machine learning so if we if i don't know uh, anything uh about like if you if i don't know your knowledge about statistics but if i know that you are good at causal inference i can make i can make an assumption that that uh that you you are probably good at good at statistics which also makes me uh, makes it more likely that you are good at machine learning okay so you can see that the flow is going from causal inference to statistics to machine learning but uh 
in that case in the case when i don't know about statistics now if i if i condition on your knowledge about statistics uh, that is if i know about statistics if i know about your knowledge on statistics then how much you know about machine learning becomes independent of how much you know about causal inference so now it like causal inference and machine learning uh, they don't have any causal relationship with each other because i know your knowledge on on statistics so so you, know, you see knowing your level of statistics already gives me all the information i need to infer uh, the level of your machine learning skills knowing your level of causal inference will give me no further information in this case so if i know your knowledge on statistics i can infer your knowledge on causal inference and infer your knowledge on machine learning uh, i don't need causal inference to uh, to judge your knowledge on machine learning so as a general rule to variables that share a common cause are dependent but independent when we condition on the common cause so you can see that these are two a and b are uh, are are independent given the the common cause okay so whether it's a flow a a to b to c or whether it is c causing a and b if you have this common uh node if you condition on this uh then the two two systems or two variables are independent now the only structure that is missing is the collider so this is called the collider structure so this is this is called the fork this is the collider a collider is when two arrows collide on a single variable we can say that in this case both the variables share a common effect so both these variables these are leading to this common effect for example statistics and flatter it both of them combined together they give you job promotion now as an example consider that there are two ways of getting to get a job promotion you can either be good at statistics or flatter your boss okay if i don't condition on your job promotion uh, that is i don't i know nothing if you will get or uh, you won't get it then your level of statistics and flattering are independent if i so if i don't know about your job promotion i i can't say anything about your statistics knowledge or your uh, how good you are at flattering in other words knowing how good you are at statistics tells me nothing uh, about how good you are at flattering your boss on the other hand if you get the job promotion certainly so if you get this uh knowing your level of statistics tell uh, tells me about your level of flattering so if you are bad at statistics and you did get a promotion so if if i if i know about about your promotion status if i know that job promotion is equal to 1 statistics equal to minus 1 so then definitely you are good at flattering right because according to this graph i am not saying anything like that and it becomes more likely that you know how to flatter otherwise you won't get the promotion so conversely if you are bad at flattering it must be the case that you are good at statistics so this phenomenon is sometimes uh, called explaining away because one cause already explains the effect making the other cause less likely and as a general rule conditioning on a collider opens the dependence path not not conditioning on it leaves it closed so if you are conditioning on the on the on the collider then they are dependent on each other so it's it's no more like they are independent if you don't know if you don't have the knowledge of job promotion then they are independent so only the collider structure is opposite rest everything uh, like if you know about about a particular uh, Uh, about the common cause in in the other cases if you know about the common cause the the uh, the connected nodes are independent for a straight forward uh, like a to b to c or a fork structure but not in the collider structure so knowing these structures the three structures we can derive a more general rule a path is blocked if and only if it contains a non collider that has been conditioned on okay so here as a final example try to figure out some uh, independence and dependence relationship in the following causal graph so is d independent of c okay so is d independent of c 
Can anybody tell me? I'll not show the answers. Is D independent of C? This is a, uh, what is this structure? Okay. Yes, no, I'm audible. Yeah. Sir? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Here, uh, D is in from graph. You can see that D is independent of C. And what about the second one? D is is D independent of C if condition on A? Um, I don't understand the question means uh, uh, from first one we can say that D and C are independent but yeah. from second uh, D and C both are influencing the uh, presence of a, a, a event. So they, they won't be independent right? If you know A for example if you know about job promotion then they are both dependent on each other right? So they are not, uh, so it contains a collider structure. So they are not independent. Yes. So, it is, yeah. so yeah, we will, we will see more of uh, causality in the, in the next class. And uh, if you have any questions,